Ho, oh, what is up, you guys? My name is Lucifer One, and welcome back to Reaction Week Installment 14, Episode 6. That's right, we're moving right along with these horrific animations. Uh, went back to Llama Art. Found a couple extra video, a couple other videos. Uh, one six minutes, thirty one seconds. One like four minutes or three minutes or something like that. I don't know. It's gonna be a little bit over a ten minute video, like I try and do. But this the first one is called True Pizza Delivery Horror Stories Animated. These are really really cool. I like Llama Stories arts or Llama Arts art style. So I don't know. I'm just gonna quit talking about it. We're just gonna watch this video and get completely creeped out. Without further ado, here we go. Third one. I was out doing a delivery one late night. It was probably the longest drive I have ever taken for a pizza delivery. From the pizza place I worked at, it was a 20 minute drive, which isn't too crazy out where I live. Plus, they ordered four large pies, so I figured it was a party and I would get a much bigger tip. Navigating the dirt roads at night was always annoying, though. I pulled up to the given address. It was some old, sketchy-looking building, literally in the middle of a forest clearing. There were no cars parked anywhere, or any lights on. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood and he told me to at least knock on the door and check it out. He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway and forced myself to the front door of the building. There was no doorbell, so I just knocked really hard. I heard nothing and didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed. Not because nobody answered the door, but because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. I knocked one more time out of desperation, and then began to hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. There was silence now. I felt a bit more uncomfortable now than before, but before I could turn around, I noticed something at the window. There was someone looking through the window. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. All I noticed were their eyes. Their eyes were open wider than I knew possible, staring Screw that. at me. I was disturbed enough by this and dropped the pizzas and ran back to my car. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third time. I drove off the grass and back onto the dirt road, but I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make it far from the building before I started hearing a sharp scraping sound coming from outside. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to a stop. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A chill ran up my spine as I began to feel like my heart was constantly skipping beats. My tires had been slashed and had completely fallen off the rim. Oh no! Not just the front though. All four tires were slashed. I realized somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. Instead of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. I was so close to that building, I could practically see it from where I was, if it weren't for the trees blocking the view. I dialed 911 and explained everything to the operator. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible, and that I need to stay hidden. I asked her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. Right. My whole body was shaking. In all directions, there was nothing but dark, seemingly endless forest. I knew it would take forever for the cops to get there. I was not comfortable with sitting in that car so close to whoever did this. The next part, though, is what utterly destroyed me. It still shakes me to this day. 
and I hope nobody ever has to experience this kind of fear. As I was scanning all the windows, making sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rear view mirror, and there was the same person. Oh the same no! Person I saw at that window. Eyes open wider than ever. I could see now that it was a woman, and I could ever so slightly see a smile begin to spread across her face. I opened my door and full on sprinted into the woods, not caring how much noise I made. I ran until I was out of breath, which didn't take long, and I hid behind a giant log on the ground. I tried to cover my loud breathing with my hands as I waited and waited for what felt like hours until I finally heard sirens in the distance. I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view, and I had never felt better in my life. Whew. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They came back with nothing except for a couple of spiky objects. These objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind of sick, demented couple being that I saw the woman, but unfortunately they were never found. And that still kills me to this day. Ooh. Well, I honestly quit that. my job right <clears throat> after that and started working at a local grocery store. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. <laughs> that was a good little tidbit at the end there. Okay, that was the first one. True, That was... Legitimately spooky. That was cool. <laughs> like I said, I love his art style. That's really cool. All right, now I'm gonna go over to the disturbing true Snapchat stories animated. Oh, no, 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 don't play yet. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. This happened a week ago. Up until a few days ago, I went to a small, local gym in my now previous New Jersey town called Black Bear Fitness. One day, I had the misfortune of running into some skinny, awkward, yet creepy looking kid, probably 18 years old. He didn't look like he belonged in the gym at all. I had headphones in and I was doing my set when I heard him saying something to me, but it was muffled by the music. I was already annoyed with this kid, given that he was breaking an unwritten rule of the gym. Don't try to talk to somebody when they're doing their sets. I took my time finishing my set, and then took my headphones out to ask if he needed something. Then he started acting like I looked familiar, but right away I knew this kid was just trying some pathetic attempt at making friends. I assured him I didn't, but the kid wouldn't stop talking to me. I'll skip most of the conversation, but eventually he actually asked me for my Instagram and Snapchat, weirdly enough, and for whatever reason I gave them to him. Instead of just saying something like, buddy, I'm trying to work out, or I don't have social media. After I gave him my Snapchat and Instagram, however, I did kind of urge him to let me resume my workout. He finally seemed to get the message and walked away. Not without saying bye like three times though. That night, I got a snap on my phone saying, from Sean. I immediately sighed and said, oh no. Just wondering why the hell the kid would snap me. I opened the snap, and the kid was in a creepy, weird pose, face way too close to the camera, with his head resting in his hand and a half smile on his face. The text over the picture was, hey, with two Y's. I muttered the words, what the fuck? For the record, I'm a guy, which made this even more weird. My thought process was, I've had enough of this loser already. I'm gonna remove him and How make harsh. it clear I don't want to talk if I see him at the gym again. And so I did. I removed him minutes after he sent that snap. 
hell? I'm sure not even a minute later, again, a message popped up on my phone saying Snapchat from Sean. I waited a few minutes before opening it. This one was even creepier. Now the kid was sitting up on his bed, no smile, more of a surprised, angry expression. The text over the image said, why did you remove me? Now I went as far as to block him, meaning he couldn't snap me anymore. And that was that. I threw my phone on the desk and sighed out of relief. Half an hour later, my phone goes off, saying Sean added you as a friend, and then Snapchat from Sean. He actually made a new account. I opened the snap and felt my heart drop. It was a picture of my front lawn. The text over it, answer me, bitch. Oh, sweet Jesus. The first thing I could think of was, how did he find my address? Then I realized, Snapchat made that new map feature that lets you see where your friends are. Somehow, I had the balls to open the window to see outside. It was clear out there. I shut the window and the blinds and started considering calling 911. Oh, no! It was the sound of taps on the window. I took a deep breath, and with one swift motion, I pulled up the blind and the window at the same time and pulled the kid into my room by his neck. I punched him in the face a few times before he was out cold. Now I called 911. By the time they arrived, he was awake, cursing me out, promising he'd be back and kill me. The cops heard it all. I didn't even have to make a case. The kid was an idiot. Luckily, the timing of this worked out well because I just moved a couple days ago out of state. Only thing that worries me, I don't want to have to make a new Snapchat account, but anytime somebody new adds me on the app, I'll never know if it's secretly that Sean kid again. Just make a new Snapchat account. That's creepy. <laughs> oh, that's it? Aw, well, that was short. My damn thing. That was pretty good, though. That was interesting. That wasn't too, too scary, but, yeah, that was really... <laughs> uh, sorry, it's noon, so. <laughs> anyway, that was pretty interesting. To that was pretty disturbing. That was really disturbing. That wasn't as horrifying as the, um... The Deep Web one, which sucks that I didn't get a chance to make Meat Light of Day because that was a really good video. But that was still pretty cool. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> uh, that, was, that really does take guts. I mean, if you're if someone actually does that to you, the main thing to do is not confront them, not actually open the window and pull them in. That's a bad idea. Because if... <laughs> what if he had a gun and he was pointed at the window right when you opened it, he just shoots you in the face? Or something like that. That's that's something that's not very ideal. It worked out for him, but it might not work out for others. So, I mean, tidbits take away from that. If you're being stalked by some creepy person on Snapchat, just call the cops. <laughs> create your new create a new account and everything. Oh, stuff like that. I'd rather just do that than have to deal with someone shooting me in the face. But we went in this episode here. That was fun. That was really interesting. It wasn't as terrifying as the first one I watched from Mama Arts. That was still really good. So, all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, and peace. Ah.